Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Hart. Today I'll be breaking down this eight game NBA slate we have here on DraftKings for Tuesday night. Talking through some of my favorite early little core plays as well as building a potential lineup around those core plays. Obviously everything changes with injury news, so make sure to stay updated with me on Twitter at HartDFS. As well as my free Patreon, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and let's get into this breakdown. Now first glance at the games for today, there's some slight blowout risks like we do have Milwaukee versus Orlando, but there is some injury news that could definitely change that. Charlotte versus the Knicks, that is the, the biggest spread there, 10-point spread. We also have Brooklyn versus Houston, which is a little bit risky. That's 7-point spread. Utah versus Dallas, that's a 9-point spread. So there is some slight risk of blowout on this slate, but overall, it should be pretty close, for hopefully, our for every game. So with that being said, moving on to Milwaukee and Orlando. On the Milwaukee side, obviously, we have Giannis, who is questionable due to that right knee. Looks like he should be go good to go versus the Magic, and then Drew Holiday is questionable as well. Um... Obviously, with Giannis, most likely good to go. I think he looks like a great spend up at 12-4. He hasn't been like the best recently in terms of like spend up 58, 50, 59, 59 at 12.4K. You really need him to get like 60, 65 plus to kind of be worth it to spend up for him. But he's still a solid player versus uh, the Magic. You know, great matchup here. Uh, Drew Holiday, if he's out, I would assume they just kind of open up the floor and start a guy like Javon Carter, who would be like a decent play. Like I'd expect at least 20 minutes from him. So I think he'd be a solid value play, but it's one of those things like 20 minutes, he could still go out there and really do it not too much. They do have a pretty deep bench. They have Jay Crowder, they have Pat Connaughton, they have Grace Now, and you know, they have Bobby Portis, they bring off the bench. Uh, they just have a lot of guys. And obviously, Giannis is still going to command the usage. Chris Middleton will come off the bench, command that usage. So it's just like really not a lot of interest for me in this Milwaukee side besides Giannis. Moving on to Orlando. Uh, just strong secondary plays. Like if Wendell misses, Mo Wagner should start, who'd be a very solid value play as we saw last game there. Um, yeah, he'd be he looked really good. Bull Bull would get, you know, backup power forward center minutes. You could definitely take a dart throw on him at 3,200. Um, who else we got here? You could always look to a guy like Suggs. If, you know, Gary Harris misses, Suggs did start. 4,200, he played 35 minutes. He was decent. Uh, Cole Anthony, another guy who is pretty solid off the bench. Uh, usually pretty productive at times. So, yeah, I mean, there's some good, you know, strong secondary options, but no real standouts to me right now. Fultz is still probably my favorite option there. Uh, he's just been super consistent recently. Um, Paolo, a few good games recently, 49 half, 38, 46, but just don't love the matchup price tag. So right now, kind of just holding off on going to anyone in that first game. Moving on to Washington and Detroit on the Washington side. Uh, great matchup here. Uh, Porzingis' price has come down a little bit. I do like him. Beal looks pretty decent. He's actually been super aggressive the past like month and a half, uh, even with like all three of them back, which has been surprising. Uh, but yeah, he looks decent. Kuzma is questionable. Obviously, if he is out, it just raises the the floor and usage for guys like Beal and uh, Porzingis, who'd be you know pretty strong plays here in this matchup versus Detroit. Right would be a very solid play once again if there was no Monte Morris. But if Monte Morris is back, it kind of takes both Monte and Wright out of play for me. Um, I'd, I'd prefer getting to Gafford and Denny if there is no Kuzma. You know, if there is Kuzma, you can still get, take a shot on Denny. But if there's no Kuzma, I do really like Denny off the bench here. 4,600, he's usually pretty productive. Uh, but yeah, really, right now, it's just kind of the top two for me. Waiting for that Kuzma news. If he's out, I do like getting to Denny. And then Gafford, we know if he can just stay out of foul trouble, he should see mid-20s minutes, and he can definitely get you there in that amount of time. Uh, but I still just prefer, prefer going to one of the main two guys. Moving on to Detroit, uh, once again, just everyone's just questionable on this team, coming off of a back-to-back -back last night. Um, actually, yeah, I thought they played last night. Yeah, they did. So, we'll have to wait and see. I'm assuming um, Bogdan will be back. At that price tag, I do like him, uh, even though he's pretty score independent at times. Ivy's still a decent price on him. Uh, he played 31 minutes, did not do well, and still got you 41 fancy points. So, he does have some upside there. Uh, Killian Hayes, if he's back, it, it really just depends on who's going to start here. They're all pretty cheap. Um, so it's one of those things you kind of just have to wait to see who's in and who's out because they literally have, what, six guys who are questionable that really could change the whole whole dynamic of that that team. So we'll have to wait and see for that. Uh, just make sure to stay updated with me on Twitter at HeartDFS. Moving on to Charlotte and New York. Charlotte side, um, it's really just going to be kind of Kelly Oubre for me at 7,200. Still, you know, the minutes are great. Shot attempts are great. Uh, not the best matchup. There's slight blowout risk. I think this is what, eight or nine point spread, or no? This, excuse me, it's a ten point spread. So there's a chance that these guys don't get full run. 
but he's probably my favorites. The other guys are just like decent secondary options for me. Um, you know, Dennis Smith Jr. off the bench. Should see mid twenties. He's been productive. You can definitely go to him. Uh, Nick Richards, if you think uh, Mark Williams gets a foul trouble, you could look to him. But yeah, not a ton to like here really on the Charlotte side, even though um, it's a good matchup for the Knicks. I do like Randall at, ten, at almost 10K. Brunson, if he plays, I think I prefer him. Uh, he'd be my favorite on this side. Uh, we know Charlotte plays no defense, so I'd really like to get to Brunson. Uh, Barrett looks decent as well. Uh, it's finally solid, decent minutes. Obviously, the game went into overtime or double overtime. Uh, at least overtime. I forget if it was double, but yeah, he did well. Uh, before that, it's just the minutes, right? Like he could definitely go out there and play well, not even 30 minutes and kind of hurt you at 5 3. But I think it's a great price tag to take a shot on him. Maybe he found something the last game quickly. Obviously, pretty much a lock at 5,000 if there is no Brunson. Uh, so thankfully, this is one of the first games, so we don't have to wait all night to see if they'll play. I do like Mitchell Robinson here. We know he's great upside. Uh, he's been playing big minutes recently. Obviously, he's pretty foul prone, but he definitely has a huge upside. And I don't think there's a need to get to the uh, the value guys. But yeah, there's a lot to like here for the Knicks side. Uh, Brunson, Barrett, Quickly, Robinson all look pretty cheap here in a great, great matchup. So I think right now I will throw in. I'll just throw in Brunson and uh, Robinson. Obviously, we kind of have to wait for that Brunson news. It does change a few things. But yeah, I think both of them look great in this matchup. Moving on to Philadelphia and Minnesota. Embiid, he's kind of been like uh, Giannis, where he's just been super, super uh, kind of frustrating in terms of rostering him the past few games. You know, 45, 49, 56, 57. Not going to get it done from a guy who's over 11,000. Um, you know, he's barely reaching 5X. So I like the matchup. It's a great matchup. We know it's Embiid. So maybe if you think he's finally going to get some peripheral stats because he really hasn't been doing that the past few games, then definitely take a shot on Embiid. Harden's been the better of the two in terms of fantasy output recently, so I feel safer going to him, and he's cheaper, but I think both of them look like great spin up in this matchup. Maxi, if he starts, is still a viable play there in the mid-range. And that's really it. Now, if Harrison and Tucker miss again, you could definitely get to McDaniels, who was great for me last night. Uh, 31 fantasy points. Kind of an outlier there with 20 real-life points, but we know he could definitely stuff the stat sheet um, and get you at least like 20 fantasy points at pretty much the flat minimum price tag. So I won't mention him. Niang saw only 11 minutes. Um, not the best. They did move Mountain to starting lap as well. He did okay. Uh, so there was a little bit of interest there for me, uh, depending on Tobias and that PJ Tucker news. Moving on to Minnesota. Uh, I think Anthony Edwards looks like a great, just contrarian spin up play there at 9,600, who really hasn't flashed his ceiling recently in the past like four or five games. Gobert looks okay. Conley Anderson's kind of priced up. Just not much to like here in terms of like price points for this Minnesota side. Moving on to the Warriors in OKC. Great game environment here. Uh, Steph played 32 minutes, so it looks like he's not going to be on much of a minutes limit. Maybe just you know 30 to 33 minutes. So at this price tag, you could still take a shot on him at 30 minutes. You know Steph could easily get you there. Uh, he shot at ball 20 times, did not shoot it well. It still got 27 points. So Steph looks like a, a, a contrarian spin up who I do really like here in this matchup. With Steph back, it's kind of hard wanting to get to. I like Clay Thompson or Poole with their price tags. Um, you know, they could still have upside. I, I prefer getting to Clay. He's a little bit safer, but with Steph back, it, it's really just kind of Steph for me. That's really it. I do like Draymond Green here at 6,500 with Steph back. You know, it should open up the floor. Four more assists for him. Uh, DiVincenzo should probably come off the bench. Or no, he did start last game. So you got definitely take a shot at him at 5,400. But right now, with Steph back, it kind of takes all my interest out of this team. Um, Looney's there. I guess he's okay, but. Really, it's just going to be Steph for me, and if you want to take a shot on a guy like Thompson or, or DiVincenzo or Green, that's fine with me. Moving on to OKC, uh, SGA came back. They said he was going to be on a like, minutes limit for the rest of the season. Dude played 37 minutes. Uh, what kind of minutes limit is that? So, oh, we're going to be careful for them. We're going to play him on a minutes limit. Dude scored almost 40, almost 20 free throws, almost 40 minutes. Like, wh what? And they were up like 20 the whole game. Uh, it makes no sense, but... SGA looks like a great spin-up play. Giddy is decent at, at, at that price tag. You know, he has been great the past three games. Uh, two of them without uh, SGA. But, yeah, he looks okay. Jalen, Jalen Williams has been playing fantastic the past four games as well. Uh, three of those, obviously, were without SGA. So, all three of them look pretty strong. I obviously prefer getting to SGA. He's the most consistent. But those other guys are there as well. And then in terms of the value, sure, you can take a shot on Jalen Williams. But... Don't feel great about that. Moving on to Brooklyn and Houston. 
Uh, another game where there was potential blowout risk. Mikel Bridges has been fantastic recently. If you haven't been keeping up with the NBA, uh, especially the past two games, 38 points, 33 points. I just really hope, hope this game stays close. If it does, Bridges, Dinwiddie, Claxton, and Cam Johnson all look a little bit too cheap here in this matchup because they're just playing a ton of minutes, right? 41 to 43 the past two games for him, 39 36 for Dinwiddie. Claxton has been at 29 27. So his minutes aren't the best, but he still, you know, should see about 30, maybe a little bit more. 31 and 35 for Cam Johnson. He fouled out in the second uh, game there. Uh, Cam Thomas, minutes have got really gone down for him. DFS, 38, 33. He's 4,000. Royce O'Neal, 34, 19. So they're just running their starters into the ground here. So I do have a lot of interest in this Brooklyn side. Obviously, you get one of the best matchups of the day versus Houston. So right now, I do like Dinwiddie a good amount. I do like Claxton. I do like Cam Johnson. I do like Bridges. All four of them look very, very solid here against Houston. Moving on to Houston. On their side, once again, it's still, for me, I really just prefer Jalen Green, even though the minutes haven't been great just because of blowouts. But, you know, he's been shooting the ball well recently. Uh, 46% and then 38 and then 46, 57. So 31 real-life points. He's pretty scoring dependent at times, but I, I do like him at 6,400. That's really it. Not a lot of interest for me in anyone else. Tyree Eason's minutes have been up recently, so if you want to take a shot on him at 4,800. I mean, there have been some blowouts, but... You know, you can definitely look to him. I will mention his minutes are up. Whoa. There we go. Uh, moving on to the last two games here. Uh, for Utah and Dallas, obviously a great matchup for Dallas. But Utah side, just more strong secondary options. Like Kessler's up to 7K. You don't feel great about that. His minutes are still kind of all over the place. Horton Tucker, like what happened to this dude? The dude was starting starting to look good and then just really fell off in terms of the minutes recently so really hard to trust him in this price tag uh but yeah there's really not much to like here maybe chris dunn is probably my favorite play there at 4800 but that's really it um yeah not a lot to like here for this utah side just a lot of you know contrarian options because it's not the best matchup versus dallas on the dallas side i prefer getting to Kyrie. luca's just a little bit too pricey for me he still has a ceiling obviously it's luca but you know, it's hard to get to him with Kyrie Irving alongside of him. Christian Wood minutes haven't been great. So it's just not a lot to like. One of those teams where it's just Luka commands so much usage. Kyrie commands so much usage. It's just like, what's the point of getting into these secondary options with a guy like Wood who has seen no minutes? You know, Tim Hardaway Jr., 21 points, but only 26 fantasy points. It's just like, these guys really aren't doing much. Kyrie and Luka kind of control everything. If Cleaver plays 3,200, maybe he sees 20 plus minutes. You could definitely get to him as a value, but I mean, that's really it. Not a lot to like. Moving on to Memphis LA. Obviously on the Memphis side, a lot to like here. Once again, Tyus Jones is way too cheap. We saw him that last game versus Clippers. Get the start. Uh, he was pretty aggressive. Shot the ball pretty well as well. 25, 12, three, five steals. Obviously a huge game there. Uh, just way too cheap. Obviously he can go out there and score 20, 25 fantasy points. Kind of have a down down game but at that price tag of 4900 that, that's just way too cheap for a starting point guard uh on the grizzlies here jaron jackson jr decent you know he should get a minutes and usage bump with no jaw but i, I still prefer getting to bane there 7700 i think that's way too cheap as we saw shot over 20 times in that last game he's gonna get a little bit more of a bump with assists and rebounds as well so i think he looks great there at 7700 in this matchup versus the lakers in terms of like secondary options, you can get to Tillman. He's a decent play. He saw 34 minutes. He's been seen 30 minutes the past few games with no uh, Brandon Clark. He's had to go to Anthony Davis, so he looks decent. Um, Tillman, or excuse me, Brooks, you can get to him. It, it's just a horrendous roster trying to you know, play that guy. Santi saw 20 minutes. Uh, if he gets hot, he could be, get extended. They threw in Luke Kennard. He played 29 minutes, so he looks like a decent value play at 3,600. Uh, Conchar played, was it 20 minutes? He looks okay. Um, who else do they throw in there? Do they throw anyone else? Zaire Williams, he played six minutes, but then they did start Roddy at the flat minimum price tag, played 25 minutes. If he plays, uh, or if he starts again, he definitely looks great at 3,000 as a very, very cheap uh, price tag player. You know, his minutes are a little bit of a question mark. He could definitely go out there and only play 15, 20, but Flat minimum price tag, 3000 for a guy that starts, uh, you know, he could definitely fall into some points, and I don't make, mind taking that shot there. Moving on to the Lakers, um, you know, Delo's probably not going to play here, so it's going to be Anthony Davis, Schroeder, 
Vanderbilt, Beasley, and Brown starting. Uh, that's starting five. Once again, I still just prefer getting Anthony Davis. He's still a little bit too cheap there at 10 8. Schroeder's fine. Vanderbilt's fine. You know, Beasley's fine. They're all kind of fine. No real strong standouts. I mean, Beasley's been terrible. He's been god awful. Uh, but he does have upside if he can hit his shots. Troy Brown's been decent recently. I uh, don't mind him. I prefer getting to uh, one of the guys off the bench, though, whether that's a Reeves, who's been playing pretty well recently off the bench. Um, Lonnie Walker has been doing decent, not the best. Uh, Rui, okay. So right now, really the only interest for me is going to be in Reeves or Anthony Davis. And that's really going to do it for this slate breakdown. Uh, so here are the four core plays as of right now. Tyus Jones, Desmond Bain, Mitchell Robinson, Jalen Brunson. So I think for right now, just because of the, a bunch of that injury news, I'm just going to leave it at these four core plays and then just update my four core plays later today on my Twitter and my free Patreon. So if you guys like the video, hit that like button and subscribe. Check out my price fix video, which will be out later today. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.